This episode of the Red Bull Rant is brought to you by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Rant. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster and William Martin. Now, on to the show. This is the Red Bull Rant Podcast. If you aren't expecting adult language, why even bother listening? Welcome, my friends, to the show for Ends. This is the Red Bull Rant Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Iapico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman. I'm pretty sure this is episode 274, The Disabler. Uh, did I not change? I didn't change that, huh? I changed the title of the doc, but not the actual numbers inside of it. I was paying attention. Yeah. Oh, my, my brain was disabled there for a second. Mm. Um. So very so first off, we apologize for not putting out the mini episode I said I was going to put out. What? You didn't put it out? What no, happened? Because I forgot. Come on. Oh. <sighs> I'm sorry. Guy, I predicted a one nothing win on that show. So No you no, didn't. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's I have the agenda. I wrote it down. <laughs> Point swing, motherfuckers. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so really good week for the Red Bulls. Uh, and me. Yeah, and you. <laughs> uh, six points for both the team and Pat because like he's gonna keep talking about it all day. <laughs> six points. Uh, the first uh, two nothing win on Forza Lucha Day, continuing the streak of not losing and more importantly winning on Forza Day. Five zero oh, and one. And the, and the draw was the very first one, right? Yes. So that's four. So that's five straight wins then on Forza Day. Yes, and, and, five five straight five straight wins. And if you recall, Forza did not go off all that well the first Forza. So I think it was just the bad energy of everything arriving late that day, just transferring Ooh. to the game. It, Good point. It, they, there you go. It was the the first show jitters. That's what it is. It yep. was. <laughs> um. Anyway, two nothing win over New England, and we're gonna talk about each of these a little separate. But I just want to throw this out there, and then a one nothing win. Which, if you were in the stadium, congratulations. You saw more than people at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, one nothing win with BWP getting gold number 100. And we're going to talk about that separate. We have we have a whole thing we're doing with that. Uh, so first, the New England game, likes, dislikes. Uh, Tribune, you go first because it was four states. Will you go first for that game? What did you dislike about the New England game? Uh, I mean... Uh, that I don't know, a little bit of a slow start, I guess. But uh, according to reports, that was all part of the plan. Yeah, my ass. Right? Uh, yeah, right. No, but I mean, I, I mean, that's really it. I can't complain about the rain because when you play in a real stadium, <laughs> you don't get rained on. Um, I mean, I guess that's it. And again, I, I can't get on them too much about a slow start because the weather was kind of atrocious uh, for the players on the field. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this, even though I mean it does seem like sour grapes considering another game happened. But since it was gonna be my dislike before the DC game anyway, it, it is gonna be that first half. I mean, again, I think it, it was another uh, yet another example uh, where it looked like Chris Armas did not know what he was doing. Uh, the whole idea that it was a slow start because that was plan bullshit. Uh, and if that was the plan, it's a shitty plan because you're gonna get burned if you think that's the plan in the future. Um, so that, that, that really was it. That was a big dislike. Um, cause again, it was like, it was just another poor half of Red Bull football, uh, since, uh, Armas has taken over. And of course, everybody don't bite my head off. Three, ha- three more halves occurred after that. <laughs> yeah, I guess not the pile long. Cause that's really the, the biggest thing is the, the fact that we came out. Well, here's what I don't get about the statement that that was the plan. And, and tell me if I'm wrong. But what, weren't we, like, on the front foot the first, like, five, ten minutes? And then it was like we backed off? Sure. Maybe. 
so if it's the plan from the beginning to let them have ball, then why are you pressing the first five, ten minutes and dominating <laughs> the game? Because you know what it was? I think they forgot. They're like, let's go play good soccer. Like, fuck, oh, no. That? <laughs> That's not the plan. Back off. Play like shit. And then look what happened in the second half when they played the way they were supposed to be playing. Yeah. Exactly. Um. And I just realized, I mean, we, did we have tweets for this game, by the way? I just realized we skipped over that section. Uh, we had one. I, I think it was actually the thing we just talked about, too. So, yeah, just one from um, Casey Jones. Good result, considering it could have went either way for a good portion of the match. Shout out to BWP, the greatest of all time, on 99 goals. Because back in those days, he only had 99 goals. Oh, way back on a Saturday BWP only had 99. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, because I'm scrolling through his timeline, I have a question. Do we need to talk about attendance, or are we just going to skip over it? No, because of, of the weather. No, that's okay. Uh, don't care. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a fucking problem, and it's. it's I mean, what, what are you going to do? Uh, apparently, uh, I think uh, you know they're. Um, Someone, who was it? Uh, Bill Reese apparently has, I think he was on another podcast discussing, and he has a reason for why attendance is terrible. And I think I saw it in a couple of tweets saying that those tickets were for years bought by ticket brokers who lost a shit ton of money. Now they're not buying them anymore. And I guess they're just not going to the general public now. Uh, I don't know. Um, so that I only saw it in a couple of tweets. That may even be like a quarter of the story. But either way, it's fucking awful. It needs to change. And it's not going to change this year, I don't think. And I, I'll just say, I, I don't care. I just want the team to win. So, mm, there's only so many times I could talk about attendance. Yeah. I don't know. If attendance remains on a dog shit. I don't see any incentive for anybody to improve this team. It's chicken and egg story. That's what it is. Mm. What do you do first? Do you invest in the team? Well, they're, they're, you- here's the thing they're producing a product right now that should fill seats, and it's not. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we should be showing up and, you know, and then with our dollars that we're spending, they should be improving the team. So making it even better than it is already. So that's what you you would think. Um, But, yeah, it's it's just just not happening. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, likes the game. Again, Truman, you get to go first. And only because it's four today, you get to go first. What did you like about this one? I like, I guess I'm just going to talk about the game because we'll talk about Forza Lucha after. Uh, I like that Royer gets a chance in the second half, barely, just barely misses. Very upset with himself. Uh, what is it? Moments later, he gets the second chance on the free kick and scores. Yep. So, I mean, it's like he learned, he learned from the first time and then buried a second opportunity, which I think was the, the free kick from the Rizza. Uh, yeah, uh... Which is just a great play, absolutely great play, uh, to put them up, and then it was game over. You knew they're going ahead one nothing on Forza Lucha Day. That, that's it. Uh, my like, I guess you would have to say, is uh, actually is going to continue to go with the RZA. Um, You know, he's been on the bench for so long, and I think we've seen that with European stars sometimes uh, when they or foreign stars in general, if they get benched, they just kind of go in a shell and they uh, give up. Uh, that is not the case with the RZA. I mean, he's been on the bench for an extended period of time, and for two straight games now, I think he's really played uh, exceptionally well. Um, you know that that cross uh, to to Royer was filthy. It was great. I mean, it was absolutely perfect. Um, so you know, you got. I, I just love that about uh, he didn't get down on himself or when he was on the bench, and when the opportunity came. He uh, rose to the challenge. Uh, so, two thumbs up, Rizza. Uh, my like, and I think I mentioned this to you, when we were in the stadium, was I didn't understand bringing Colin in as the first sub for, um, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name, Any, uh, Long. I don't know why bringing him in made sense. But I feel like the back line actually played a little bit better. Uh, he, he was sick. Oh, Long was sick? 
They said it at halftime. He was sick, yeah. Okay. that ma- See, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't know he was sick. Yeah. And uh, okay. he, they didn't announce it before. The, he was sick before the game, apparently. Uh, but he wanted to give it a go, and they didn't announce it because then they'd be giving their – they'd be giving that away to the other team. So, yeah, you were at the game, so you missed that. Yeah, he was sick. Okay. See, that makes a lot more sense then. I – Knowing that, I would have thought it would be better to keep him out. But I mean, for for being sick, he still played pretty decent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I thought for sure it was that they had another game coming in, on Wednesday. And yeah, like, that's, yeah, that's you know, what, yeah. We talked about the stadium. That was what you said: is rotation to keep the guy fresh. Yeah. Well, you guys were wrong. <laughs> yeah, but we were at the game, man. We were there, brother. We were there, man. Which, by the way, running back to my car after the game. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, don't I know it? As I screamed in pain. Well, at least I was gonna say at least you had a poncho, but yeah, you're you had no, you had other <laughs> it was a rough day. It was a long, <laughs> long rough day. Yeah, I base I I almost sprinted from what was it? Gate. We left out of Gate B. I almost sprinted to the the um, gravel lot. Yeah, I, I stopped where the cars were coming out because I figured you know. I am not going to run out of front of the car and get hit in Harrison, New Jersey. It's not how I should die. <laughs> so. Also, uh, escaping the back parking lot behind the warehouse is one of the greatest nightmares of all time. <laughs> you might as well just start tailgating a second time because it is impossible to get out of there. First time, and that will be the last time I ever, ever go back there. Yeah, that's what I did after the uh, Costa Rica game. I didn't bother. I just fired up the grill again. Yeah, um, what a mess. Yeah, by the way, the, I don't know what... I, I The gravel lot, I don't understand what's going on with it. It's almost like the years of cars driving over it has not tampered everything down. My car actually got stuck for a second, leaving the stadium. And I and I was afraid I was going to start kicking gravel up trying to get it loose. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, it didn't happen. But it's definitely seen before. Yeah. Yep. All right, anyway... Uh, on to the next match. Before, hold on. Before I, I just want to throw this in because we're going to talk about Bradley a million times. Okay. Just my very quick afterthought for this game when Bradley scored, the best part was him turning around, pointing at the two nines on his back. Oh hell yeah! Went back and forth. So I just want to throw that in there. I thought that was great. Which I feel like that for sure foreshadowed what happened in DC. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, DC, just a mess. <laughs> where do you begin with last night? Where, uh, where to start? Let's see. Good well, evening. Well, we got to start with the weather, which uh, if you're not living on the East Coast right now, it's just been a miserable Saturday through Wednesday. Like today was okay. At least down here it was okay. Mm-hmm. It was it's humid. Not bad up here. It was humid, but at least it wasn't raining. Um, torrential downpour is probably the closest I could think of to what I was seeing. Uh, was the Audi field was leaking yeah. during the game? Oh boy! Uh, they they had to delay the game by an hour and a half because of the lightning in the area. Ew, lightning! <laughs> um, and then MSG's feed went out twice. Once at the start of the second half, and once about the seventieth, seventy fifth minute. Yeah, that was pathetic. And of course, that of course, part of that the reason that that happened was because the guys were in the studio, not in DC. Yep. Which, I guess, looking back on it, not saying to DC probably was good from a safety perspective because they weren't out on those roads. I, I guess, but and that's the only thing I can think of. Anyway, uh, then BWP scores, pulls off his jersey, shows reveals a white jersey with one hundred on the back. Yeah, son. And, and I love that he had it ready to go. And yeah, honestly, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Honestly, amazing. I am perfectly okay with him taking the yellow card for that. Absolutely. <laughs> that I mean, awesome. genius. Genius move. All right. So, uh, likes, dislikes. Oh, wait. I forget. We don't have any tweets for this game, right? We do not. That's right. Because people. Because it was 11, 1130 at night. So, <laughs> yeah. I think. Pat's tweet about his his six point swing got more play than our <laughs> stuff. Damn straight. Although I do say this, so one person liked our tweet from after the game, and I want to read out the Twitter handle. Uh, so actually, not the handle itself, but the, their like quote name. Uh, but so the the Twitter handle is at 
T-Sat Sickle, T-S-A-T Sickle. The the name right now is Lee from Brooklyn dash Kaku dot E-X-E. Fancy. Yep. Nice. And they have a screenshot of a program. It's actually Kaku.exe, so I'm guessing they renamed something just to get the <laughs> screenshot. <laughs> That's dedication. Uh, anyway, likes, dislikes. Uh, Pat, you go first. What do you dislike about the DC match? Uh, um, I mean, I guess I just you know dislike that. Uh, I don't know that I had to wait an hour and a half, <laughs> you know, to watch the game. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing too too much to dislike about the game itself. I mean, it was a slog. There's no question about that. Uh, but that's what you expect when you have a torrential downpour that, uh, from social media pictures, which you suggest also flooded the concourse of Outer Field. Um, so, you know, I think just a long wait was kind of a bummer. I kind of finished my six pack of beer, like by midway through the first half, uh, because, uh, I was outside grilling and, uh, all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah. So I guess just like the whole routine, my whole routine, which is very selfish dislike. Uh, being disrupted, that that's pretty much it. But I'm going to join you on the selfish dislike because I it ruined my whole night. My whole schedule is thrown off. I had, all right, 8 to 10 game, and then I was going to watch some NXT afterwards. And then by the time you found out, I'm like, well, I'm not watching anything now. Mm-hmm. So I'll just do gotta, nothing until the game comes on. And when the game's over, I'm like, i got to go to bed. Because NXT is from 9 to 10? Well, I, I, I think it's from eight to nine, but listen, I had two episodes to catch up on, and I still oh. have an episode to catch up on. Yeah. So, you know, it just kind of threw everything. I mean, I feel bad for everyone who went down to the game and had to figure out how to get the buses to wait mm. to take them back. Because yeah, that, that that's the tough part, which I mean, I guess everything was good because I didn't, I didn't read anything bad that happened. I guess the buses did stick around, but, um, that that's a killer for you for when a game's not ending till eleven thirty. And what time are you actually leaving? Midnight. By the time you, by the time security lets you walk out, yeah, like yeah, midnight. yeah. And then that's, that's like that, five a.m. minimum by the time they get back. And then driving home in a downpour, so maybe a three hour drive back to Red Bull Arena. Well, I would say that'd be closer to five. So I mean, well, okay, no, not okay. So that's right because well, here's the I don't know. Where Audi Field is in relation to me, but for me to Red Bull Arena is two hours. Me to RFK was about an hour, fifteen hour and a half, depending on traffic. Well, I've, I've gotten the DC in two and a half hours, but I'm I'm and I've driven. Well, I haven't driven, but I've taken the bus from Red Bull Arena to this to RFK, and it was about three ish. So, all right. So either call, way, it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. It re- really really sucks for everybody. Yeah. Anybody who went to, anybody who went there and went to work today? Wow. God bless you. <laughs> Seriously. You are a champion. Not Dan champion though. No. <laughs> uh my dislike since you guys didn't mention it was MSG's stuff. Like I I get that they're not on site. Okay, so I'm gonna ha- put this half on MSG, half on DC, and whoever built Audi Field. It's it's a, no, here's the thing: it's on MSG because when I went to the illegal feed, it was working just fine. Yes, but, I also but, saw a illegal feed of the game that was. But open. who? But that was the DC broadcast, right? Yeah. So in other words, the, the, what they're broadcasting out of the Audi Field is working, which probably had their truck in the in the lot. Yeah, and. I imagine MSG didn't have a truck in the lot. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying you were about to blame Audi Field. So I'm saying. So uh, well, I'm, I'm I'm saying half and half because state. I, I'm well here because this is the thing. So I mentioned it last night to you guys that a lot of stadiums have fi- fiber optic connections, right? And yeah. that was mainly to support stuff like this. So that way, well, more of the streaming side. Um. Like the NHL and all that, and let's see, NHL, NBA, and Major League Baseball, I think, mostly have fiber optic connections. So that's why you can do their streaming stuff and be able to pick your feeds. Because, and granted, when they do that, both of the feeds are also in the stadium. Because that's most most of the time, that's how those sports are run. Uh, I don't know the setup of Audi Field, so I'm I am honestly assuming some things here. I am assuming that they didn't take the time to put a fiber optic connection in because it's in the middle of DC. 
and there's only so much infrastructure you can get there. Well, they also didn't really take their time to build an actual functioning stadium. So well, I, I mean, that's you're asking for insane. a lot. Yeah. So I imagine the fee that MSG had to get back from uh, DC was probably like the satellite feed from uh, whatever, I guess CSN or whoever it is down there. So of course the weather's going to play a factor. And then I'm putting on MSG because the, if DC is not that far away. There's no reason you can't send somebody down there. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say half and half. Cause I feel like if Audi Field's built better than it, it doesn't matter as much, but then MSG should have been, should have had their asses down there in the first place. I don't think you can blame, again, I don't think you can blame Audi Field. I mean, Audi Field has a lot of problems. So I, we, I am, we've seen a, it. I will I admit, I'm making a huge assumption there that, that, that's why they got the difficulties they did. If I could find a feed online on some bullshit website and MSG can't get a feed, that's on MSG. Yeah. That is not on Audi Field. Uh, you know, on the image I was getting, it was crystal clear. Uh, you know, it didn't fill my screen, but it was, it was definitely there. This is on MSG. Um, but unfortunately, here's where I think – I don't want to say give them a pass, but I mean, come on. We, we just saw what happened to the daily news in New York. Uh, this is where, this is where media is going. They're, they're cutting wherever they can. And if uh, they can get a feed from another, another stadium, they're not going to send everybody to the stadium. I mean, it was nice for those two or three years. They seemed to try. Um, and Shep and, uh, Shep and, uh, Kansas Leosi went on, on site. Uh, but unfortunately, it's, Unfortunately, I think it's, that's the thing of the past. Um, with everything, with, with people cord cutting and everybody making less money, they're going to cut costs wherever they can. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it sucks, but I, I know it's going that way. If this was a game in like in San Jose or, or LA or something like that, like I would totally understand because that's a much more expensive trip. But like DC, Philly. NYC, FC, New England, like those, I could see you sending like one truck and your two guys. Like, I, I don't, I don't think it's that expensive for that trip. I mean, here's the thing. I will say, I think it's valid for fans to complain. Um, but this is how, this is where it's going. I, I mean, at the same time, this is where it's going. Um, until we pay for cable again, until we, uh, buy newspapers again. Media is going to keep cutting, and they're going to do whatever they can to extend, extend the I, bottom line. I guess it really comes down to what kind of TV ratings they get for road games. Yeah, I mean, there's that. Cause, too. Cause, yeah, cause, absolutely. Because I mean, from my understanding, MSG sends their crew out with the Rangers and Knicks, so mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like they don't have a budget, it, I guess it comes down to that MSG um, is not getting enough... No, no. I'm saying they don't... MSG doesn't get enough viewership for the Red oh, yeah. Bulls, yeah, so it's exactly. not worth yeah. it to them. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's, uh, it's certainly uh, for the Knicks and the Rangers, they, they're certainly getting uh, more. But at the same time, don't be surprised if that's not the case soon, you know? Don't be surprised that they stay home. Um, you know, the, the Carolina Hurricanes just fired their radio staff, and they're going to simulcast the the TV audio for radio. I mean, they, these, these are things that are, it's, again, as long as if people don't want to pay for things, this is what's going to happen. And, uh, and rate and cable. And, I'm, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of people out right now. I mean, me, I watched on a stream for most of the game, uh, but that doesn't count as a rating. So it, it's, you know, and I'm not even talking about the time when I hopped onto an illegal feed. I'm talking about, you were doing uh, your backyard legally. I was sitting on the backyard. I used my Verizon login, all that good stuff. But that doesn't count as a rating point. Um, I mean, not that you were in your house counts as a rating point either, but that's a whole other discussion. Uh, well, I mean, if I have a Nielsen box, which I don't know if anybody knows if they have a Nielsen box, but um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so that's unfortunate. It's just it's the way it's going. And unfortunately, soccer is – well, I shouldn't say soccer, but MLS is at least is still the fifth biggest league in the country, and so it's going to be the first one that's going to see this. Don't be shocked if you're a hockey fan, if you're a baseball fan. The way that's going, I mean, their ratings are dropping. Uh, if you start don't start seeing uh, similar cost cutting measures 
Because uh, as someone who doesn't give a shit and just looks at the bottom line, doesn't give a shit about the sport, and say, why can't you just watch it on TV and and give your your recap from there that way? You know? Yeah. I'm not saying it's the way it should be at all, and I think fans should complain. It just might not go anywhere. Wow, yeah. this, this is way... All right, let's... For the love of God, now, now we're getting depressed. Well... Thankfully, we have them to pick us back up. Give our <laughs> likes, and then we have BWP. I wow, yeah, good, great. All right, so likes, uh, Truman, you go first. What did you like about this game? Game was over two minutes in. <laughs> over, over two minutes in, it was over. That was it. Uh, I mean, I, they should have scored like five more goals, really. Uh, especially in the first like ten minutes, they could have scored three. Uh, but I just like. The idea of, despite the weather, despite the broadcast, despite everything else, Bradley Ray Phillips scores the only goal in the game. It's the 100th goal of his career, of his MLS league career, uh, and it's against D.C. in their new stadium, giving them an, uh, their second game played there, and they already get a loss. So there is no fortress at Audi Field. Uh, Bradley took care of that in, in about two minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of funny, the whole, like, oh, well, once they get the home games, they have a chance to get back in the playoffs. Well, Rebels kind of squashed that pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> like, nope, DC's still bad. Um, my my uh, big, like, wasn't the best game, but it was still the most complete game we've seen under Chris Armas so far, uh, which was certainly encouraging. Um, you know, so, I mean, yeah, it would be easy to just say BWP number one uh, being a big, like, but She's going to get, we're going to talk about him plenty. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to give, um, I'm going to tip my hat to Chris Armas on this one. Not the best. I think it's, it's more closer to, uh, the Baca's, you know, Baca Pecky era of more conservative soccer than what we experienced under, uh, Jesse Marsh. But it was, uh, oh, and yeah, I said Jesse Marsh's name. Oh no. I know we got one tweet saying like, can we just start bringing him up? Like until they completely erase uh, my memories of him with some spectacular play. No. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, from that from that standpoint, I mean, I think uh, it's one game, it's one full game, so it's not ready to like just completely shut the door and move on with Chris Armas era. But I think it's it's certainly a, a encouraging step forward. Yeah, I, I mean, there's but that. Making it about BWP, it's hard to find. Oh, you know what? How about this? Wayne Rudy comes into the game, and what happens? He gets shut down and starts crying. Yeah, he was he was very cranky after not getting the call. Which, on, uh, which I mean, come on. Possible takedown in the box that never got reviewed. I, well, I was going to say, it didn't – well, I don't know about the kick out, but going for the header was definitely not intentionally uh, – like – Parker was clearly playing, or the phrase it, Parker was, by what I could tell, looking like he was playing the ball and got tangled up afterwards, and that's what brought him down. But you never know how good, you know. But Parker sold it. If if he intentionally took him down, he sold it very well to mm-hmm. not get that even reviewed. Yeah, he did lay his arm across him. Um, so may have dodged the bullet there, but... At the same time, this, I mean, if uh, Wayne Rooney had paid any attention to the first, what, 60 minutes, he would have noticed this ref was calling nothing. So, yeah. you know, oh, no. it's kind of like, what do you expect? And by the way, I think that ref may have been 15 years old. No. He wasn't 15 because then he would have been allowed out to finish that game out. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been like an FAA pilot rule. Like, sorry, kid, you're 15. You can't be out past 10. Like, they wouldn't allow it. Yeah, I mean, I'm most surprised you didn't like red card uh, somebody for like, you look at my girl, man. Red card. Uh, all right. So. More, by the way, more at looking at someone else's girl in dumping ground. Yes, uh, there is. <laughs> um, all right. So, before we do BWP, any afterthoughts on this on this game or the New England game for that matter? I, I'm I'm going to say no. I think we kind of talked about everything. Okay. Uh, I thought Tim Parker was was pretty stellar. I will give him that. All right. So BWP. Oh, I, one, one, one quick, uh, yeah. I just thought about this. I meant to say it earlier. I apologize. 
During the rain delay, Christian Dyer and Shep Messing had a <laughs> very entertaining back and forth for like oh, that. Uh, it was so great. It, it, anything Christian Dyer said, Shep Messing would just immediately say, I disagree. <laughs> Go to the wrong reason. Oh, it was fantastic. It was like the old man taking the young whippersnapper to, to church. And I'm not saying that Christian Dyer was wrong at, on everything he said, but it was highly entertaining. Give these two a show. It would make me so happy. But of course, going back to cost cutting measures. That was- <laughs> There's always right. YouTube. There's always a YouTube show. It, 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 fine. Give these two a YouTube show. <laughs> you know, Patreon. Patrons. That's it. This will be the first thing we produce. We'll <laughs> and die a report if you give us money. How's that? <laughs> I, we'll have to figure out what their what their budget is per show. What, what, well, what we, we definitely have. need more patrons, so yes, you know, we need more money. We need more money before we even approach them. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. So BWP uh, 100 goals. Uh, so by the way, they're having a cel- celebration after the August 5th game against uh, LAFC. Uh, yes, LAFC. So if you're going to the game on that date, stay afterwards. They're going to have a BWP 100 goal celebration. Uh, there's a video that they put out. I haven't looked at it yet, but it has Thierry Henry in it. So, if you, mm. him, you get a yeah, what, like a like a congratulations video. Yeah, it's on Twitter. Oh, cool. All right, I only watched the eight minute long video of all of his goals scored. Yeah, I watched that one too. <laughs> I need to find that. Uh, so we have tweets and emails. Uh, I'm gonna read the tweets first because the tweets are about the about Wait. the goal. Because the tweets are about something separate from the f- fact that he scored 100 goals. That's yeah, why the tweets I'm... are about what we posted earlier today. Yeah. Okay. So, you should probably set that up then. Well, I'm going to read these emails first, which are related to him scoring the 100th goal. Oh, I thought you said you were reading the tweets first, which would have no. made, wouldn't have made any sense. No, sorry. It's emails first, then tweets. All right. Now we're talking. All right. So we got two emails. Uh, and I, Lee, I'm not going to even try. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try to do it. What do you say? Jernowitz. Thank you. Because I would have completely fucked that up. Yeah. Uh, he says, "How about BWP making brilliant on goal 100 just to show off to quote Kaku Meg Master Supreme?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought Grella was the the original Meg Master Supreme for just one nutmeg on Frank yeah. Lampard, right? Lapmard. <laughs> uh, then Jeremiah Dempster. Uh, so I'm here's a quick question. Hmm. I, I put. The abbreviation of the email subject in the agenda, GWP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you guys want to guess what that stands for? Because uh, I'm go, assuming you haven't seen go, the, the, the go, go right, Phillips. Uh-huh. Wait, what'd you say? Go, go right, Phillips. Yep, go right, Phillips. Come on. Uh, anyway, he says, Rant dudes, I had an email ready to go after the New England game and decided to hold off till after DC. I'm glad I did because the only thing we're talking about at this point is BWP. I'm glad you called us rant dudes. <laughs> he comes up with a different title every year. Yes. So. Uh, the man is just good at what he does. I'm feeling really lucky to have him, or sorry, I'm feeling really lucky to have been a fan of this team at the same time as he's been a player here. He comes across as a great all around guy as well as the, as all the amazing things he's, he has done on the field for us. If making sure Red Bull wins MLS Cup while he's still on the team doesn't motivate the rest of the players, then I don't know what will. Naturally, there's a lot of stuff to talk about now that we're three games into Armas era and seeing his effects on the team. But I'm leaving this week to Brad. Man deserves a solitary moment in the spotlight. For sure. I hope he writes a grime song about his 100 (laughs) goals. All right. So setting up the tweets. So we put out a little uh, poll for you guys. Uh, it was BWP uh, in the list of the top goal scorers in MLS history. And he right now is at tied for number 10, technically with Edson Buttle. Yeah. Uh, one away from Taylor Twelman, four away from Dwayne De Rosario, 45 away from Landon Donovan. So the question was, where do we, where do you think that BWP is going to end up on the list when his, when he is done with the New York Red Bulls and MLS? Uh, tweets are us, are us first. Uh, we go, first. Oh, I say tweets. Oh, okay. I'm finding the way. So let's do tweets first. Because let's do tweets because then we have lots of stuff to talk about ourselves after we read the tweets. Okay, so. cool. Re- are you guys ready? Let's do this. All right, we here we lie. go. You braced? Braced? Everyone braced? All right. Braced. 
Uh, all right, here we go. Red Bull, uh, RBNYCT, Red Bull Connecticut, obviously, says, I think at least fifth is reasonable given his age. Mm. Uh, Ansley Biner says, above, above Razov, but below Moreno, listen, no Red Bull player will ever be below <laughs> Jaime Moreno. Just so, b- by the way, Razov has 114, by the way. I just want to, and Moreno has 133. And uh, just that's in perspective. And it's fourth and fifth all time. Yes. Okay. Uh, our good, good, good friend Pete Hurek, of course, uh, well, he's buddies of ours, says he'll finish around sixth. Very respectable, uh, for his about, or for his time in the league. Those ahead of him are mostly MLS lifers, which is spot on. I mean, and look at Landon Donovan, mm-hmm. uh, aside from the few times he traded himself away to, uh, European countries. Uh, Ravi Katri says, I say he's sixth by the end of the season, then two more. Two more seasons of 10 to 15 goals probably puts him around third or fourth. Uh, also, do not doubt that BWP can't get to number one. Hmm. Uh, I think he can make th- – oh, I'm sorry, uh, but JRZ, 7 nothing on Twitter. Uh, I think he can make third if he finishes 2018 hot and starts two more years in MLS. While age is a factor, he's still fast and has shown amazing durability. Also, we have no viable replacement. Yes, thank God because of his amazing durability or we'd be in a pickle. Rich Ransom, I'm saving you for later, uh, but we're, he did post, is he the best Metro Red Bull player ever? Let's get back to that after we're done here. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, who just emailed us, said one more season, fifth. Two more, third. Uh, subsequent seer, Saber Hess on Twitter. First, no doubt. I like it. I like the balls on this guy. He's got less mileage on him than others his age. RBNY have no replacement. I think he'll tack on 15 plus as a sub once his starting days are over. I'm just going to quick say I don't think he'll ever be a sub guy. I think he'll retire. Uh, but that's just me. That's okay. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Uh, speed soccer system. I'm expecting him by the end of the season to be about to be at around 110. I believe he means goals, not ranking, because that'd be weird if it went down. <laughs> uh, King Jojo at J A V O N N J second, maybe first. We won't know the true answer until uh, Wando hangs him up because Wandalowski is in second, I believe. Correct? Uh, right now, according to the stuff we posted, he is five back from Donovan. So yeah, okay. Well, he has to make sure he doesn't keep kicking balls right over the net. Anyway, oh! uh, Sean Field Sean Ito says fifth. So there you go. So on a side here, uh, do we forgive Wando now that the team has actually missed the World Cup? What? We say one more time. Do we do we forgive Wandalowski for 2014's big miss? Never. Even though the not even though a whole generation just totally fucked up and missed the World Cup. Never. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Sorry. Cannot do it. Not damn it, Matt. So I'm gonna throw this out there real quick. Right, Phillips, because I just did the, the, went to Wikipedia, found the, the stats. He is scoring 0.4 goals per game. <laughs> he is, he is almost scoring one goal every two games at, in MLS only. It's insane. Pat, Pat looks perplexed. Well, no, because I mean, what, his game plays. He, no, you're up, sir. It should be more than that, right? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I looked at the career total line, not the MLS total line. So, excuse me for a second. So, he is scoring .63 goals per game. There we go. In MLS. Wow. wow. That's fucking bananas. So, to hit 45 more goals, or 46, that would be... I'm going to just double it. So, we're going to call that 90 games. Mm. Question is, does he have does he have three more seasons in him? Well, he's got 14 more games this year. Yeah, but I'm – okay, but – so I'm assuming – so, okay, that's down to, let's call it 85. So you still need two seasons after that mm-hmm. to even come close to eight. Well, no, you need three in MLS to hit 85 games. Wow. So, all right, so let's go to thoughts. Pat, where do you think he'll go? I think he could be at sixth. By the end of the season, which is one away, and that's Jason Kreis. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I don't know. This is tough because you, you, you know, I feel like we've expected the death of BWP so many times. Yeah, for like two seasons, at least two seasons now, and, right? And it just hasn't happened. So 
to that theory that he is an ageless wonder, and, and you you wouldn't expect it with his pedigree, his European pedigree. I mean, like you see it with guys like Zlatan, but I mean, Zlatan played at the biggest clubs in the world. I mean, you're not surprised he can still do it at 38, whatever he is. Um, BWP doesn't have that pedigree, but he, again, yeah, we, we've expected him to crash and burn before, and he hasn't. Um, man, all right, so Jeff Cunningham's 134. Uh, that's, uh, ah, man. I'm going to say definitely fifth above anti Razov at 114. I see is that big ass gap between 133 and 114 to occupy. Mm-hmm. You know what? Just because fuck DC. <laughs> I'm going to say he ends up tied with Jeff Cunningham, but above Javi Moreno. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go all out and I'm going to say he, he will finish third, uh, maybe a goal above Jeff, Jeff Cunningham. I think it's going to be very, very hard to get 145. And again, Wondolowski is still playing. Mm-hmm. So we don't know how many more goals he's going to get or how many more years he's going to play. So it'll be, I think it'll be tough to chase the guy that's still playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could, I can see him uh, play two more seasons and the rest of this year. I mean, that's what we're saying. We're saying he's going to play two and a half more seasons. Mm-hmm. If he plays two and a half more seasons, I see him finishing third. Mm-hmm. And of course, we're all talking barring the horrific injury, blah, blah, blah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree that by the end of this year he could be either at 108, which is Jason Kreis, or right above it. I mean, the, he's scoring one goal every point seven games of this year alone. So it's not. I mean, and we have at least what ten games left? Ten, twelve games? I don't know. We got more than that. We. We have we have a, a decent amount of games left, so, so there's a chance that he can do that. Mm-hmm. Well, um, sure. And if he's healthy, and here's the thing, right? We're this is the funny thing. We're saying he's old. He's 32. I know. I mean, I'm 34, so I'm not that. I, I, I actually want to I'm say, 36, and I look forward to having my metamucil with that bad defense. <laughs> I, I was I was going to say it last night while watching the game when uh, I think they mentioned his name and it was pretty much like, oh, how much does he have left in the tank for a 32 year old? And I feel I felt like this giant gray beard just growing <laughs> into my face because that just makes me sad. I feel like every time I uh, watch sports now, I just like eat a piece of hard candy. Like, oh. <laughs> Where's my Werther's? Um. Okay, Jay, you gave your so, your thought. So I, didn't, I didn't finish it. So okay. this, so end of this year, it would not surprise me if he's around one hundred eight, if or if surpasses the Christ. Mm-hmm. If he can go two more years, given the pace that he's at, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna say roughly one ten, right by the end of this year. I don't think that's unrealistic. I think one ten's realistic for this year. So if you give him two healthy years, I mean, it's po- I don't think I don't think we we'll catch Wando because we I, I imagine Wando will be around another year or two at minimum, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, as if he keeps on the streak, there's no reason to think that he can't get into third. I I, I think he could go past Cunningham because you're only you're at that point you're talking. Uh, about seventeen a year, and he hasn't had less than seventeen a year. I mean, he had, right now he's at fourteen, but I mean, come on, he's going to pass seventeen by the end of this year. But in MLS full MLS season, he is at minimum seventeen goals a year. So if he can get if he can get himself to like one hundred five, one hundred ten, there's no reason to think that he couldn't. If you know he keeps at seventeen or better, that he couldn't possibly get the third. Mm-hmm. I, I, he's not going to be first because th- I, I don't think he's going to be around long enough to, to get to Donovan and even then one of the last he's going to go past him. My bigger concern, honestly, is not even the age. It's what's going to happen in a year or two. Are we going to, if we continue this youth movement, does, do the Red Bulls get rid of him? No. It, that, you say that, no. but I mean. No. He, he, no, because they don't have a replacement. 
Right. They, damn right. As, well, as a okay, few of our right tweeters now, have said. Right now they don't, but if they find one in the next year or two. Oh, well, maybe next year or two, but I mean, like. Uh, I'm, not, yeah, I'm not saying right now. I'm saying in, in the. Like, let's say he has to go three years. Let, mm. Let's give him three years total, right? Uh, so that gets him to 35. I think Henri was what, like 34 when he retired? Or 35 or something like that, right? So, I mean, that's not an unrealistic age for him. Uh, but I don't, I'm sure. So uh, let's let's say he makes the 35. I don't think it's unrealistic to admit that he makes the 35, but I I could see if they find the right talent that they decide to <laughs> cut over early and avoid a downfall. We've been again, Pat said not, earlier. We've been waiting for that downfall for about two and a half seasons now. I, I know that, and I'm not suggesting it's going to happen. I just, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to put like a GM hat on at that point. I'm just saying, like, this may happen, and if I had the talent, why not start integrating him early, kind of thing. BWP is like the mayor from season three of Buffy. He will never, ever die. <laughs> oh God! You know, I never finished Buffy. Except for when he gets turns and uh, he would he, he, he turns into a giant, giant snake, snake monster. Yeah, 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 giant snake the monster. Thing. So, by the way, so quick sidebar: I'm on the college years of Buffy. Is it even worth continuing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's even worth finishing the bad seasons. Okay. Anyway, back to, back to soccer now. Um, let's move on. So, prediction standings because we're uh, close to an hour into this already. Uh, prediction standings. <laughs> Truman, you're still in first because you got two points. Yes. Pat jumps up to second. Yes. And I dropped the third, even though I, even though we all got wins. Pat did get his made six points. Exact predictions. Yeah. So, uh, time to talk about the Columbus game uh, this Sunday coming up. The Red Bulls will host. Wait, is it the, wait it's Saturday? But are we hosting? Did I get that wrong? No, you're right. They're home. Oh, don't, why aren't they doing the BWP celebration this week? Too soon. Yeah, they didn't know it was going to happen. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, anyway. Well, I'll give you two reasons. You ready for two reasons? Uh, too soon, and they're playing Columbus, and that game in August, they're playing LAFC. Well, who do you think more people are going to show up for? Uh, yeah, that's a good call. Boom. There you go. All right. Anyway, uh, Red Bulls are hosting Columbus this Saturday, the 20, 28th, not the 21st, because... I know how to update things. <laughs> uh, and 7 p.m. And now I got to check that goddamn time. So I'm pretty sure that might have been wrong, too. Nope, 7. Okay, I got that right at least. Uh, game is on MSG because it's Saturday night. Uh, Columbus's record, pretty sure this is 9, 7, and 6, not 7, 7, and 6. Uh, man, I'm doing so great with my my uh, thing tonight. Columbus is 9, 7, and 6 with 33 points. Uh, exactly zero goal differential, uh, with a two five and three record on the road, and their last five is not that great. The uh, one, then two losses and two draws, so they're not coming to this game in a strong position right now. Uh, predictions, Truman, since you're still in the lead, you get to go first. What's going to happen on Saturday? Uh, I'm going to make it quick. Two nothing win. The end. Uh, I think they're going to keep feeling the feeling the flow of um, BWP. Uh, again, you're like Columbus is, is kind of struggling as of late, uh, coming home. I know they played, this is the third game in a week. Um, but I think kind of playing a wounded Columbus team is, is perfect and it's Red Bull Arena. Uh, no reason why they shouldn't win. Yeah, I'm actually double down. I'm going to take the exact same prediction. Two nothing win. Uh, I think they are playing a while, starting to feel better. Uh, you know, it, it's – they're doing um, – you know, they're starting to gel under Chris Armas, shall we say. And, uh, yeah, that Columbus hasn't been so great uh, lately. And, again, home game – everything Truman said. Yeah, home game, um, I, I think uh, they're they're coming off a high. Yeah, 2 nothing win for the Red Bulls. Uh, I'm going 2-1 win only because we – we did have some trouble with them when we played them early this year. Granted, it was on the road for us anyway. But uh, you know what? No, screw that. I'm changing this because I'm looking. At, I'm looking at them. 
Oh, son of a bitch. I read the long, wrong line again. I read the Colorado, Colorado line for the form guide. So the last five is two wins, three losses. And they're coming off a win. So do you guys want to change your predictions? No, I don't care. Fuck Columbus. Okay. <laughs> Pat, you this shit, you can say anything about their line. I could get two craps about their stupid line. They're yeah, winning. Two, two nothing. Okay. Uh... I'm still saying 2-1 because I don't feel like they're that tough. Of, I mean, they're not that easy of an out, but you do have the BWP. I, I think you'll see a little bit of like a um, emotional bump from BWP hitting the 100. Especially because you know the crowd that will be there on Saturday will be all about BWP. Mm-hmm. So it's got to provide something. All right. Uh, so New York Red Bulls 2 lost 2-1 at FC Cincinnati. Next game is uh, this Saturday against Tampa Bay Rowdy, 7.30 p.m. All right, they're visiting Tampa Bay. Uh, Sky Blue FC still without a win. 2-1 loss at home to the Portland Thorns. Now they're traveling to Chicago on Saturday at 8 p.m. Hopefully they'll finally get one. <laughs> Hopefully. Um, all right, dumping ground. Uh, what do we want to start with first? Do, I, do we want to do fours or last? Sure. That we all the soccer stuff is first. All righty. All right. So I guess this is all Pat because I, <laughs> I didn't write anything down. Uh, well, yeah, I guess first up, uh, Alfonso Davies uh, of Vancouver, a 17 year old Canadian national, uh, transfers to Bayern for 13 million, apparently with incentives. It could be up to potentially up to 22 million. Highest in MLS history. How do you guys feel about uh, a Canadian? Being the highest uh, transfer in MLS history, as opposed to American play, an American player, is Canada about to overtake us in the national team game? Uh, no, <laughs> uh, but good for him for getting out of trash, trash team Vancouver mm. and going to Bayern friggin' Munich. Even though he will definitely not be uh, seeing minutes, uh, but yeah, what a great place to go to. Yeah. Uh, sure. Honestly, I don't really care what country they're from because it just to me it's about MLS uh, MLS's reputation growing in terms of player development mm. that can only mean good things one can certainly hope uh, next up is oh it's it's uh, <laughs> it's back it's it's tabloid time baby um, hold, on, hold on we need we need we need like a, a fancy show title for this for, for what's happening right now but uh right. Like real soccer players in Atlanta or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Real soccer players of Atlanta. <laughs> uh, for those of you who may not have heard, Ezekiel Barca, uh, the 19 year old wonderkin who was kind of a surprise signing for Atlanta at the beginning of the year. Uh, he could have gone anywhere in Europe, and he chose to go to Atlanta. Was suddenly suspended last week when coach Tata Martino would not say why. Well. Dirty South Soccer, with a little help from Reddit, has kind of fleshed out the reasons why, and that's because he slept with a teammate's girlfriend while the, he is married, by the way. Uh, so that's kind of a no-no. Uh, he pulled a John Harks and uh, <laughs> kind of uh, really upset the order of Atlanta, and he was suspended for the last game, and he is also suspended for the next. Um, who knows what that means for the future? Uh, the player that he did, I, f- I forgot his name. I think his last name is Vax. I forget the first name. Um, he's kind of a backup striker. Played on a few youth national teams for the United States. Uh, any thoughts on the drama down in Atlanta? Yeah, don't get married in my lowest common denominator. Yeah. Sorry. I had to. Amen. Uh, yeah, don't don't get married at such a young age. You might not get yourself into these pickles. Yeah, come on, kid, yeah. nineteen and you're pro athlete. What are you thinking? Exactly, Derek Jeter, it up, my friend. Be Derek Jeter <laughs> and give her a signed soccer ball as you kick her out of the house. Right, that guy did everything right. That's the way you should have been. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay stay out of the tab, boys. Don't get married and don't bang your freaking teammates' girlfriends. Oof. Yeah. That, that last part is regardless of what your marital status is. Because yeah. bad news for you, every supporters club knows that this happened. So yep. guess what happens to every stadium that team's going to play in? Uh-huh. And as you know, Red Bull supporters have 
a few good chance for John Hark. So it's definitely not a place you want to, the road you don't want to go down. And, so, and, and the fans of Rebel Arena are definitely not afraid to call people out. Uh, no. no, not at all. So well done. Well done, Barca. Well done on pulling a Harks. <laughs> uh, enjoy your however many, many days you have in the ATL. <laughs> Uh, and finally, I finally bet on MLS legally at the Metal Ends, FanDuel, Sportsbook. Um, I put a parlay on, uh, the Red Bulls, uh, Atlanta and, uh, Portland Timbers this past Saturday. Mm -hmm. Have no idea if I've won money. (laughs) Well, this isn't going well. Because I have, uh, two, two teams won and then one drew and like the ladies like, do you want to draw no bet? I'm like, uh, I don't know. And I was like, I just want to bet that they win. And she's like, well, draw no bet means you get your money back if uh, they don't win, if they draw. And I'm like, okay. So I don't know how it works. Uh, so I, I intend- it's, it's a one-to-one payout. You get exactly what you put in, I guess. May, yeah. See, but that's just because I parlayed. I don't know how it works. So I'm going to go back Saturday, put another bet in, um, and just see what I have. I'll bet on the Red Bulls again. And let's see. Let's do a quick, do a quick Pat, Pat gambling session here. <laughs> plus, plus, okay, Atlanta is traveling to Montreal, but I'll put, so I'll put money on them. I'll put money on the Red Bulls. And do you, do you want a three-team parlay? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, because it's damn straight. Yeah, it increased my winnings, baby. All right. So LAFC or wait, hold on. That's today, so you can't do that game. Yeah, never mind. Um, let's see what other good games could you do. Yeah, man, there's not there's not a lot of guarantees. No. Uh, NYFC as much as it's as never. Much as, okay, never. <laughs> um, I would say Salt Lake versus San Jose, but that doesn't seem like. What about yeah. whoever DC is playing? Well, that'd be well. They're playing Colorado. Oh God! Stay away! <laughs> Stay away! <laughs> Run away! And you can't even you can't even use Toronto, <laughs> Chicago at this point. Uh, yeah, because Toronto's Toronto's uh, they're kind of doing all right lately. They won one game. That's better <laughs> That's than doing all right. And it, was, <laughs> and it was oh well, well, hold on. It was at Chicago, and they're hosting Chicago. So a lot of things they say should absolutely win that game. Yeah, I think I might just go to Portland again against Houston. So I'll ride two. Just ride the same three teams. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved. You, you get your money back and just let it ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All, All right, right. So, so Forza Lucha. Yep. All right. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to say this real quick that, uh, I thought it was a great day. Um, but it's hard for me to say because I spent the entire day running around <laughs> and doing things and taking care of stuff. And you don't really see a lot of the matches. In fact, you barely see. Any of it. Now, Pat, I don't know how much you saw because you're watching it, but you're filming it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, the only audience member we can go <laughs> to is Jay, the only man who actually sat there and watched the show. So, Jay, from your your absolute honest opinion, what did you think of the show? All right. So, little caveat. This was, I think, my th- third actual live wrestling show. Mm-hmm. So I don't have a lot of live experience. But it was definitely the most entertaining one I've been to. Because so I was at Forza Two, but I was kind of helping Pat at that one. Yep. So I don't really count me watching that one. Um, and the other one I went to was uh, Maryland Championship Wrestling. Uh, it was a four-hour show that they did called the Shamrock Cup, and but basically it was like how you how Forza Two ran, where you had multiple like four-man matches mm-hmm. that were four spots in a cup. Um, but this one was definitely better. Of course um, it was. Well, because this is the weird thing. So I, I just maybe maybe it's because I was just excited to be there. But that probably helped. Mm-hmm. Um, because it wasn't like disgustingly hot outside. So inside, even though the AC wasn't running, it wasn't terrible. Um, right. And then. I and I have to admit I love silly wrestling shit. So seeing a female alien come out and do a strength of, <laughs> uh, a strength of wills test without actually touching somebody is just amazing. <laughs> um, and 
And again, I, I told you this on Saturday. Congratulations on having more intergender wrestling than WWE would ever dream of. <laughs> of course. And I did not know that Tara Calloway had a T-Rex. Oh, yeah. That was, so that was a surprise to you, which is it awesome. Was. I was I was wondering why they came out and then were waiting for a third person. I'm like, who the hell is coming out? <laughs> Here's a T-Rex. I'm like, oh. And then I felt bad because the T-Rex was trying to pick up a bottle of water that was near me. And I didn't think of it right away. I was like, oh, man, I should have dropped down and helped the guy pick up the, pick the, or help the T-Rex pick up the bottle of water. But I, I didn't. But it was it was great. Uh, all the wrestlers were great, uh, except for Huckabee because he yelled at me a few times for trying to clap and get that started. <laughs> um, but yeah, every everybody on the rest on the roster was great. Uh, the matches were great. I it was a lot of fun being there, and I the kids bring the weapons match was as much as our team lost. Oh yeah, our team did lose. That is yeah, true. Our team, our team lost. But it was great, and, and <clears throat> I I wish for your for Forza's sake that the Hogan news hadn't just happened. But um, I thought the spot with the with the dolls from the uh, the nineties was great. The Russell Buddies, yes, <laughs> I can remember what they were called. Uh, it's it's too bad they didn't win because they did. The Russell Buddies won, and they were, they were cheated out of their win. <laughs> the Russell Buddies were screwed, damn it. <laughs> it was the Harrison screw job. Hey, uh, you, you never cheat the superpowers. I, I, I'm with you, Sherman, on the whole. I, yeah, I can't, I'm actually looking forward to watching it when we edit because uh, yeah, it, it is hard to kind of uh, gauge it all. Uh, when you're trying to focus on a single move and a single facial expression. Um, I will say that what I did enjoy is a lot of wrestlers worked the camera this year. I know at least Hot Sauce, Tracy Williams, I believe Craig Steele, and I think somebody else, but I can't remember who. DC? May, but no, I don't think I it thought, was I thought he did. I thought he did when he had the mic. He might have, but I mean, I feel like there was a, there was a third match where somebody got in the camera and was like, I hate you, all you good people who are good, <laughs> because I'm evil. And uh, so that that was fun. Uh, and obviously being able to hear the chants uh, being turned into wrestling, like uh, the hate uh, DC. For the hate DC, hot dog, uh, vamos, vamos, beefcake, you know. Uh, that was a group calling themselves the Beefcake Ultras. Yeah. Oh, oh, who did who did Beefcake wrestle? He wrestled Dan, Dan Champion. Man. Okay, that's not the match I'm thinking of. Uh, I can't remember the dude's name, but there was a dude who did a second rope moonsault, and I'm like, he should not be able to do that, and I can't remember who he was. Well, like I said, I barely saw the show, so I got, I'll have to watch it. Tell you later. He, he was he was a little bit bit. He wasn't like. You sure that wasn't Beefcake? I it, no, I don't think it was Beefcake. It was it was somebody that was a little bit bigger, but he was like built. Was it the the big deal, Craig Steele? It might have been. Oh, well, that yeah, that. I think he might be right there. Yeah. When I saw him pull off the second rope moonsault, I'm like, "Holy shit!" Like that. Yeah, Craig Steele is very entertaining. Yes, uh, I, he's one of those ones that, like, I hope he gets famous, but I hope he doesn't, so we don't lose him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it seems like half our roster this year kind of got big and uh, weren't able to make the show. Yeah, for real. Uh, but I'll say this: you know, we lost some of our bigger names from years past, but I think this was honestly the best show we've had. Mm. I think match wise, it was great. Um, the only things I'm going to say about the show is when it goes on powerbomb.tv, I'll give you the information so you can watch that because uh, you can get a free sub- free subscription. So I think like a free month subscription to Powerbomb <laughs> because there is a secret ninth match. Oh, that's right. There is. Yes, a secret what? ninth match on this show. Uh, and if there's one thing you need to see, it's – the VAR chant. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying anything else. I don't mind going to talk about it. If there was a VAR chant, that's all you need to know. That was a great moment. It's worth watching. And Eric, the commissioner, needs to learn to put his boot down on, on declaring matches. <laughs> Calling out the commish. Hey, I love the, I love the idea, but you never, you never give somebody an out. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I think the only last thing we have is Truman's terrible team of the week. Yeah. Now I wanted to give it to LAFC because they got hammered by Minnesota like five one. Yeah, it's brutal. 
But let's face it. Let's just give it to DC United because they, they, they opened their new stadium and hooray, they win. Yay. Good times. But then they went to Atlanta and got destroyed three to one, uh, which we expected. And then we came to town. That's right. And BWP, uh, put them away early. And their stadium's already falling apart. That's right. <laughs> it's already leaking. <laughs> I think this was supposed to be on the mini episode, but remember, I have to, have to mention that. And I, if you watch the broadcast, the MG broadcast, it was mentioned. One of the sideline reporters at the first game got a concussion because of a piece of metal fell from the stadium and hit her in the head. So. Yes. All right. Uh, any last words before we wrap up this one? Uh, last words for me. Rich Ransom, to answer your question. <laughs> That's funny. We completely missed that. Yes. What was his yes. question again? I forget. Is he the greatest player in team history? And uh, BWP, yep. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll talk more about BWP uh, before the game against LA. Because they tribute him. Uh, aside from that, stay high, stay high, and win. Yeah. Keep uh, keep this momentum going and win. Oh, and because the All-Star game is next Wednesday, please don't get hurt. <laughs> Yeah, come back healthy. Uh, all right, so patreon.com slash rebel rant. Uh, one bucks a month, all you need for uh, exclusive shows such as our monthly wrap ups and live post game stuff. Red Bull rant at gmail.com if you want to call us. I'm sorry, if you want to email us. 973 348 5329 is a voicemail if you want to call us and have your voice on the show. Facebook.com slash Red Bull rant. On Twitter at Red Bull Rant for the show at Doc the Stooge for myself at PMAC D A two for Pat at the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to our show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, or at SoundCloud. Any last words before we get out of here? I said it already. God damn it! They're gonna win. Yeah, get out there and win, you bums. All right. So for Pat Truman and myself, this has been. Ep- oh wait, up. Oh, sorry. One thing I just remembered. Quick shout out, Blue Mini Mike. Because he was at the wrestling show. Oh, that's right. I finally met Blue Me Blue Mike. It was nice meeting him. Yes. Sorry. Cool. Good guy. Yep. Did you have a chance to meet him, Truman? Or were you running around too much? I was running around too much, so I sent him a tweet apologizing that we couldn't chat. Yeah. I mean, he still has brain damage because he roots for the blue team, but <laughs> nice guy. He listens to our show, so I can't complain. Yeah. Um, all right. So for Pat, Schumer, and myself, this has been episode number 274 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in, and as always, go Red Bulls. Have fun being married to Satan. Great.